Hello and welcome to the first of our distance learning lectures. Today we're going to be discussing the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, I've shared out a copy of the notes that go along with this, so hopefully you've already found and printed out this set of notes. Um, it should be in the Google Doc right above where you found the link to this video. Um, if you don't have access to a printer and you can't print this out, um, what you're going to want to do is probably just have a piece of scratch paper, something to write with, and be ready to take some notes, uh, maybe make some diagrams of the things that we're going to be um, using the Pythagorean Theorem to find. And uh, then also, remember, this is a video, so if at any point in time I go too fast for something or um, move too quickly, you could always pause or rewind the video, go back to something that you missed and be able to get that filled in. All right. So the Pythagorean Theorem. The unique name here comes from a Greek philosopher. His name was Pythagoras, and he was a philosopher and mathematician who lived between the years of 570 to 495 BC. He started a, a math and kind of cultural movement uh, called Pythagoreanism, and the members uh, of his group were the Pythagoreans. Um, not only did they um, do studies around math, uh, geometric figures, um, but also religious and um, a lot of stuff with music as well, and the connections between all of those things. So um, this is where the name comes from. The Pythagorean Theorem um, is something that we use to help us find uh, missing sides and triangles, um, but it can only be applied to right triangles. So remember, right triangles, uh, those are the ones that have a 90 degree angle created in the triangle. Um, so you have to have this type of triangle in order for the Pythagorean Theorem to work. Um, but then as you can see in the diagram here, uh, which you also have on your notes, so you should be after you fill in the blanks there for the words, uh, make sure that you label the diagram on your notes there. Um, so the triangle obviously has three sides to it. Uh, when we label it for the Pythagorean Theorem, you're going to have sides A and B. And as you can see, those are also known as the legs of the triangle. And then side C, um, it has an interesting name that we give it called the hypotenuse. And what we'll see is that uh, that's going to be the longest side of the triangle. And so then what was discovered by Pythagoras is that uh, if you were to take A squared and add it to B squared, it indeed is going to equal C squared. And so this little formula down here is the Pythagorean theorem. So in order to properly use the Pythagorean theorem, again, we have to make sure that we're looking at a right triangle. Um, but our first step is that we're going to need to make sure that we properly label uh, the, the triangle. And so, uh, as I said, A and B are the legs of the triangle. And because in the formula we've got A squared plus B squared on the same side, um, it really isn't going to matter which side you label as A and or B. Uh, typically, when we do label it, just to kind of keep some consistency to things, uh, we're going to go ahead and use A as the shorter side or the shorter leg of the triangle. Um, but again, it's not necessary or it's not going to be um, uh, extremely important to make sure that you do that because uh, when we add A squared plus B squared, we could very easily just add B squared plus A squared and still end up with the same thing. Uh, what does uh, become an importance is making sure that we get C labeled correctly. Okay, so C is usually where we start if we're going to label a triangle. So when we label um, side C, it's the longest leg of the triangle, but the way to tell which side is the longest, if they all kind of maybe look the same, um, is it has to be opposite of the 90 degree angle. So if we can find the 90 degree angle in the triangle, and then we look straight across from that going out this way, that's going to be the hypotenuse, that's going to be C, and then typically of the two legs, A will be the shorter side, B will be the longer of the two legs, um, but if, again, if we reverse those, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so jump over to the notes here real quick. 
Okay, so again, you're going to have A, B, and C uh, labeled on the triangle. Again, C has to be the, the side that's opposite of the 90 degree angle here. And then for our Pythagorean theorem, the formula states that if we take A squared plus B squared, it's going to give us C squared. Okay. So, um, if you notice, all three of our variables in our equation here are squared. And so if we're going to be solving an equation and solving for these variables, at some point we're going to need to undo the square. Uh, so, we learned how to do this last week when we were uh, doing our square roots and estimating square roots. So, remember that it's the inverse operation of squaring a number is the square root. Okay, so solving the following here, uh, equations for x, approximating to the nearest tenth if we need to. So if we had x squared, just as a little review, the way that we find x is we take the square root of each side. That's going to give us x is equal to, and in this case the square root of 49 is going to be 7. x squared equals 256. So, square root of both sides, square root of x squared is x, square root of 256, if you recall. Uh, remember, you have your squares, square roots. Um, no, it's no, actually, probably I still have those because we turned those in. So, um, you might have to look up a, a list of the squares and square roots there. But that's going to be equal to 16. And then square root both sides here, x squared, so square root here of 105. 105 is not one of our perfect squares, so we're going to have to estimate that. Remember, that's going to fall somewhere between square roots of 100 and 121 then, which means it's somewhere between 10 and 11. So if we're estimating to the nearest tenth, once again, uh, that's going to be 10 point, and then it's going to be closer to the 100 side, so maybe 10.2. But that's how we can find the square root of our numbers for what x squared is going to be equal to. Okay, now uh, our column question over here. So label the appropriate sides of each triangle with a, b, and c. So if I'm going to label a, b, and c, again, the one that's important that I have to get right is c. So we want to start there and we want to label that one first. So, I find my 90 degree angle in this first triangle. I go straight across from that, look for the side that is straight across. Again, it should be the longest side in the triangle. We call it the hypotenuse in a right triangle. And uh, that would mean that this is C. The other two sides in this one, again, A is typically reserved for the shorter side. It just so happens that in this one, they're both the same size. So again, it's not going to matter. We could call this side like I did A, this side B, or we could have reversed those. The Pythagorean theorem is going to work out either way. Okay, below that, the next triangle, again, we have to start with C and make sure we get that one right. So across from the 90 degree angle, that's going to be C. I'm then left with these two legs of the triangle to label. This one appears to be shorter in size, so I'm going to go ahead and call that one A and call this one B. Okay, so that's how we label the triangles, um, and we will start uh, our process for using the Pythagorean theorem um, as such. Okay, so next up, we've got some examples here. We're going to find the length of the missing side of each triangle in our examples. So uh, in this triangle, you'll notice that we have uh, leg lengths of 6 and 8. We're missing this side over here that's labeled currently with x. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to first label our triangle. Okay, so step one, label the triangle. Labeling with a, b, and c. And so to label a, b, and c properly, again, we have to get c correct. So I'm going to look opposite the 90 degree angle. That'll be side c. The shorter of my two legs, in this case the side that's labeled with 6, will be a. And the other leg, labeled 8, is going to be B. Okay. 
Then we're going to substitute the numbers and variables that we know into our Pythagorean theorem formula, which again, if you recall from the front side of the notes, a squared plus b squared will be equal to c squared. So for this particular triangle, side a has a length of 6, so I'm going to substitute that in for the a, plus side b has a length of 8, so I'm going to substitute 8 in for b, and then side c is the one that we don't know. We have x as a variable to use for that. You could just very well leave it as c instead and uh, solve for c, but if I switch it over to x, it still has to be x squared. Okay. So the next step, I'm going to go ahead and uh, simplify the left side of my equation, squaring each number first, right, because PEMDAS states that we have to do our squares before we can add these two together. So if I square 6, that's going to give me 6 times 6. Remember, not 6 times 2. So 6 times 6 there, which makes 36, plus 8 squared, 64, will all be equal to x squared here. Okay. Now, add these two numbers together to finish simplifying that. So 36 and 64 will make 100 is equal to x squared. And now to solve for x, just like we did on the last examples, we're going to take a square root of each side, get x by itself, and in this case, we find that x is equal to 10. Okay. Example number two, again, start with labeling. So find that 90 degree angle in the triangle, straight across from that is side C. So start there. Then the other two legs of the triangle, label A and B. Again, this one appears to be a little bit shorter, so I'm going to call that A and call this B. But if you did it in reverse, you're going to get the same answer. Substituting the numbers and the variables that I know now into my, my uh, formula for the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to end up with Y squared then instead of uh, putting, or so substituting y in for a, so it'll be y squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared. Okay, so notice that it's a little bit different on this one because in this triangle, it was one of the legs that we didn't know the length of. In the first one we did, it was the hypotenuse or the longest side that we didn't know the length for. So in this one, um, since we're solving for one of the legs, uh, the, the two numbers that I know are on opposite sides of the equation. So on this one, after I simplify by squaring my numbers, I'm going to be left with a two-step equation uh, that I'm going to have to solve for y here. So that's going to look like still y squared there, but then when I uh, go ahead and square 12, 12 times 12, 144, 13 squared, 169, and now if I draw my line and set it up as a two-step equation, I can subtract 144 from both sides. I get y squared is equal to 25. And now, square root both sides to get y by itself. And here we find that the value of y is going to be equal to 5. All right, we got a column question here. Column question number two says, describe and correct the error made in solving the following problem. So if I zoom in a little bit here, closer on this, okay. So we've got uh, in our triangle here, a leg labeled seven feet. This would be the hypotenuse, again, side C, because it's opposite the 90 degree angle, labeled 25 feet. And then it appears that we're missing the other leg of the triangle. So if we look at what they did, we did a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's Pythagorean theorem. Substituted in 7 for a, 25 in for b, and that would be equal to c squared. So hopefully you've realized and noticed that that would be incorrect right there at that step because the 25 actually needs to be c. So uh, this could be a. So what we're actually looking to solve for here is b. Okay, so if we were to do that properly, 
I would actually have 7 squared plus b squared. I wasn't given a variable. I could use x or substitute a different variable if I wanted, but I can just use b is fine as well, is equal to, and then the 25 squared needs to be on this side of the equation because the uh, 25 is associated with side c here. Okay, now, squaring here, Okay. And now go ahead and solve. Okay, we get b squared is equal to oh, 11 minus 4 would actually be 7 here. Oops, sorry, 176. Okay, take the square root of both sides then. And this is one where we're going to have to estimate because 176 is not a perfect square. Um, let's see, it falls between... 169 and uh, 196 and so it's going to be 13 point and let's see closer to that's pretty close to the middle but a little bit closer to the lower end towards the 169 perfect square so maybe 13.3 somewhere in that range All right, moving on to our conclusions here. I'm going to grab a calculator real quick because I know it's going to be necessary to help in these ones. Okay, so conclusion question number one. We've got Coach Kelly's third period PE class is playing baseball. The distance between each base on the diamond is 90 feet. Lisa at third base throws the ball to Dano at first base. How far did she throw the ball? State whether your answer is rational or irrational. Okay, so we've got our baseball diamond over here. And as it states to us um, in the problem, it's 90 feet between each base. So I know that it's 90 feet there. 90 feet here, here, and here, okay, around each side. What we have, though, is we've got Lisa over here at third base, and she's throwing the ball across the diamond over to Dano that's over at first base. So we want to know this distance straight across the diamond. Well, if you notice, what we've done now by me drawing the diagram is we've cut our diamond into two triangles. And it happens to be that these are both right triangles, where the 90 degree angle would be up here at the top at second base. And so that means that this distance that we're looking for across here <coughs> would actually be the longest side of our triangle. So that would be C. We have both legs then on our triangle here, A and B are both going to be 90 feet. So clearly on that one, it doesn't matter which one we label which. Okay, so setting up our situation for this, again, we're going to use Pythagorean theorem then. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's going to be 90 squared plus 90 squared then. And then C squared being C that I don't know. Okay, so now squaring those, let's see, we're going to have 8100 plus 8100 is equals to C squared. And now if I add those together, okay, we get 
16,200. Okay. But now I need to take the square root of both sides to find out what C is going to be equal to. Okay, and then here's where I knew a calculator was going to be necessary. And so just a reminder as to how we would do this on the calculator. Um, if you have a, a phone or device, um, typically turn it sideways and it'll give you a scientific calculator. It might be a slightly different process on, on an iPhone or some, some other type of uh, device there as to how you put in the numbers. Um, you might put it in the number first and then just hit the square root button that they give you. Um, I, I believe is, is the, um, the more typical way that it's done on a device. But remember, if you have uh, access to a scientific calculator there at home, you're going to do second x squared to bring up square root. Put in our number, 16,200. Hit equals. And it gives us 127.279. Um, it doesn't state exactly what we have to round to. Why don't we go ahead and stick to our nearest tenth idea. So the two is in the tenths place. Seven would tell it to round up. So 127.3. It was measured in feet. So we'll add that. And there would be our answer. Now, uh, the other part of the question is state whether your answer is rational or irrational. Well, if we remember, uh, only the square roots of perfect squares, which resulted in whole numbers, were rational. So because we got our decimal on this one that uh, goes on forever and does not repeat, this indeed would be an irrational answer then. Okay, go down to number two. Number two says, uh, Scott and Mark are rock climbing. Scott is at the top of a 75-foot cliff when he throws a 96-foot rope down to Mark, who is on the ground below. If the rope is stretched tightly from Mark's feet to Scott's feet, how far from the base of the cliff directly below Scott is Mark standing? Draw a diagram and label it, and then find the missing length. Is the length irrational? Okay, so to draw a little diagram here. Here's our cliff. Okay, and this is Scott up here on top of the cliff. The, we know that the, the size of the cliff is 75 feet. Okay, so it's 75 feet tall there. Um, and then we've got Mark. Down here. And uh, then we've got our rope. So we need to draw in our rope. And he's on the ground below. If the rope is stretched tightly from Mark's feet to Scott's feet. So if we go from foot to foot here. Okay. Then what we end up creating here is our right triangle, okay, where my 90 degree angle would be right here. Okay. Um, the other length that we know is we know that it is a 96 foot rope. So the rope itself and its stretched tight is 96 feet. What it's asking for then, which the, what we don't know, is uh, the distance that Mark is standing uh, from, from the cliff. So down here is our unknown. Okay. Now, as far as putting it into the Pythagorean theorem to help us find what that length is, again, we look at our 90 degree angle being here. If we go straight across from that, this is going to be side C. Call this A down here. And the 75 foot cliff is going to be B. Okay. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is my unknown, so I'm using x as a variable here to represent that, plus b is 75, square that, and then 96 for my hypotenuse, side c, squared on the other side. Okay, 
So x squared plus, now we need to square 75, so 75 times 75 on your calculator, or if you have the option of a squared button, you can hit that. But it should be 5,625 is equal to 96 squared, 9,216. This is one where we have a two-step that we're going to have to solve. So draw our line. Move uh, the 5,625 to the other side here. So subtract that. Okay, we get 3,591. Take the square root, then of both sides. And on the calculator, we get 59.924, so on. Okay, so again, if we round to the nearest uh, tenth here, 9 is in the tens place, 2 again tells it to stay the same, so 59.9 uh, feet again is our measurement, okay, and then again answering uh, is the length irrational, once again because we did not get a whole number when we took the square root, this is going to be an irrational number, so state that on here as well. Yeah, again, remember, feel free to pause the video, go back to something if you missed it. Um, this is a learning process for me too, so feel free to shoot me emails or leave me comments on the video if there's things that uh, you can't see or are being cut off. Um, I'll be posting copies of my filled out parts of the notes um, to go along with things, so if there's something you missed from the, the video or I had something that wasn't visible on the screen, um, I'll be giving the filled out version of the notes um, in the Google Doc as well for the week. Okay, one more section to take care of here. We have one more conclusion question. So, as the city planner of Wright City, you are responsible to report information to help the Board of Supervisors make decisions about the budgets for the fire and police departments. The board has asked for a report with answers to the following questions. Each grid unit in the uh, figure is representing one mile. For fire safety, bushes will be cleared along the perimeter of the city. What is the length of the perimeter? Include all of your calculations in your report. Okay, so here's our city. Again, it's in the shape of a right triangle. So up here, is where our right angle is going to be. Remember, the right angle is always made from two perpendicular lines. Um, so this line and this line would be making that perpendicular sides. So what we're going to need to do now is uh, we're going to need to find the three sides of our triangle, the lengths of the three sides. And for perimeter, remember for a triangle, perimeter is distance around the outside, so we'll be adding all of those together. So what's nice about this triangle is side C over here actually aligns with the grid and uh, runs directly with one of the vertical grid lines. And so as far as calculating the length of side C, that's going to be as easy as just adding up the number of units that are there. Uh, make sure we're paying attention to our scale, but it appears that the scale is one to one here as well. So each uh, grid box represents one mile. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Just double count that. Miles then will be the length of side C. Okay. For these other two, um, if I were to call them A and B, uh, notice that they don't run with the grid lines. And so it's not going to be possible for us just to count across. And we don't want to just estimate because uh, we're trying to give our our supervisor, our board of supervisors, an accurate number here. So what we're going to have to do with this is that we're going to have to actually turn our one triangle with these missing sides into two or draw two more triangles that we do know the side lengths of and then use that to help us find both of our missing sides. So if I draw lines like that 
uh, kind of almost like making our slope triangle, right, is what I'm doing there. Um, then what I have here is I'm missing, um, why don't we go ahead and uh, we'll call it X that we're missing there for that side. And if I draw in legs of that triangle, uh, why don't we call this Y that we're missing from that one. Okay, so now labeling the, the lengths of the legs of those triangles, this one would be two on this side, three across the top there. We'd have one, two, three across the bottom here, and one, two, three, four for the length of that leg. Okay, now we're going to have to set up the Pythagorean theorem uh, formula to solve for each of those. Okay, so down here on the paper. So starting if I want to solve for x, well in these uh, uh, cases, our right triangle, the right angle is now going to be uh, there, and so for both x and y, they are the longest leg, or side c, in their respective triangles. So for this one, uh, the 2 and the 3 would be my a and b sides, so it's going to be 2 squared plus 3 squared would be equal to x squared here. And then I'm also going to set up a formula for solving for y, and so that one would be 3 squared plus 4 squared would be equal to y squared. Okay. Now, solving each of these, again, for each of these ones, these are ones where we're trying to find the hypotenuse, so really we just need to simplify the left sides of our equation and then take the square root. Okay. Now would be a good time to practice on your own, so if you want to pause the video and try practicing solving for that and see if you can get the same answers that I get for x and y, feel free to do that, and then we'll check back in. Okay, but uh, 2 squared here, well, that's going to make 4, plus 3 squared is going to be 9, equal to x squared. Over here, 9 plus 16 will equal y squared. Adding these together, we're going to get 13 is equal to x squared, and over here, 25 is equal to y squared. Okay, take square root, both sides there. 13 is not a perfect square, so we can either estimate that, or again, if you want to use the calculator to help you with that estimate now. So if I do square root of 13, I get 3.60. So keep the 3.6 for our length of x. And our length of y, square root both sides here. This time, 25 is a perfect square, so the square root of that is 5. That's What's equal that to y. Absolute? And uh, now I know lengths uh, of all of my three steady sides. So for the perimeter, adding all of those together, so we had 3.6 plus 5 plus 6. And if I add all of that, 14.6. Miles, then, is the total perimeter of our city. Uh, I'm just going to go back and double check that we answered the questions there. Yeah, good. Got it all there. All right, and then lastly, the summary. So filling that in here. So the Pythagorean theorem states that in A, right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths uh, of the sides, or no, uh, we'll go with legs here, of the triangle will be equal to the length of the square of the hypotenuse of the triangle. The theorem is represented with the equation our equation is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where the longest side uh, of the, oh boy, I need to change this, wrong style of right. Right triangle is also called the hypotenuse, and is always labeled with c. 
This side is always opposite of the 90 degree angle in the triangle as well. The other two sides are called the legs and are labeled A and B. When using the equation to find one of the legs of the triangle, the square operation will need to be undone by taking the square root of each of the or each side of the equation. Okay, that includes uh, or excuse me concludes our notes on the Pythagorean theorem. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, need any help with anything, shoot me an email. You all have access to your emails now, so you should be able to uh, access those. And uh, you can ask me questions through there. Check for me on Google Hangouts uh, throughout the day. Um, you can send me messages through there. I'll be posting, again, um, some uh, partially completed answer keys for some of the worksheets that go along with this. Um, there is a quiz um, that will be uh, happening uh, at the end of the week, so that's posted on there, but the form I'll put up later in the week for you to be able to submit your answers on that form. Um, hope you guys are doing well, and I uh, hope to see you soon.